Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I'm your host, Jeff Hootsell, Chief Cloud Officer with AuditMax. You guys know Tech Talk is a conversation show. We talk to people doing fascinating things in the world of technology from really all over the country. Uh, we've always got some really interesting guests. Uh, today, we've got a fantastic guest coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada. We've got Rob Hornbuckle with Allegiant Air. Rob, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Yeah, so Rob, your role with, with Allegiant, you're the uh, Chief Information Security Officer with the company. Um, obviously, that's, a, that's a, a big job today. We, we talk a lot about the world of cybersecurity on the show. We have, we've had folks from some of the vendor and supplier side join us recently and talk about kind of the changes they're seeing in the marketplace and some interesting things that are happening there. Uh, we'll talk to a lot of folks about just that are managing IT security departments and kind of their approach on it. I, I'm interested to get your perspective on just what do you think kind of the modern role of the, the chief information security officer is in an enterprise organization? So the role is both technical and business related. That tends to be where a lot of the uh, differences come when you start talking about management within information security. My job is as much technical and understanding my teams and working with strategy and direction of the department as it is liaisoning with the board of directors, working with the other senior leadership, handling all the politics of the company to make sure that basically the people who are working in information security have a clear road, smooth sailing, are able to accomplish what they need to because I've handled all the political matters, the communication matters, and the business relationship matters with the senior staff of the organization. Yeah, so it's interesting you talk about the business relationship side. I think, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the technology. There's so many different aspects to, to cybersecurity and so many different point solutions out in the marketplace. It's you know, it becomes easy to get swept up in that piece of it and just talking about the, the tech. But talk about the business side. What is the importance of that from being a, a leader of the IT security practice and being able to kind of bridge that gap between technology and, and the business side of things? So I would argue that it's the most important part of the world. Uh, it's so important to, in fact, that not only do I have my master's in information security, but I specifically went back to get my MBA as a separate standalone master's degree. Uh, it, brings me to the table, it puts me on equal footing, and it shows that I understand all the language that they speak. Uh, not only that, it allows me to communicate effectively because of all of that. So now I can get to the table, I can talk at the table, and I can talk about non-security things. I can talk about business-related things, I can talk with the direction of the organization. Basically, I can be a contributing executive at all levels because I have that business knowledge. And that's what allows you to build those business relationships. A saying that was told to me pretty early in my career, though I may not have liked hearing it at the time, uh, when I was trying to transition from that management of security into those more executive leadership and security tech roles, business relationships are important because the executives of the organization, the company is like their child. And if you wouldn't trust someone to watch your child, be a real child in real life, why would you trust them with your organization? Uh, it's those same feelings that you come, you have when you come from a particular aspect, especially at family companies and companies where the person who was the founder is still in the leadership of the organization. So you have to have those business relationships in place in order to establish that trust, in order to really get effective work done and to push forward what needs to be done from an experience. So, so where do you think a lot of folks miss with that? So, you know, we hear about peers a lot of times where it's, you know, they'll say, well, we had this great plan, these great initiatives from, a, from an IT security standpoint, but when it came to budget season, you know, we were the first guys in the chopping block and you know, they just feel like, hey, until there's a big incident, nobody's really going to take them seriously. Um, you know, and give them the money they need to put up a, the proper defense and protect the company's data. I mean, when you kind of hear those stories and you think about things like that, is it, is it mainly the communication side you think is the big downfall there? Or what advice would you give to, to folks that find themselves in that position? So it's a hallmark of two things. Uh, the first being not being able to effectively communicate in business terms of what's going on. You also have to have an understanding with that, that as long as you've effectively communicated what all the risks are and what's going on with security, if the company still decides to do nothing, as long as they've made that decision, fully understanding all the risks that are associated, you've done your job as an executive leader within security. It's not your job to eliminate all risk. It's your job to make sure they understand all of the risk and take the appropriate measures according to where they want to take the business. The second that runs into those roadblocks is establishing those business relationships. Uh, 
you can't be a trusted advisor. You can't really get through a message of what's going on unless those relationships have been established, unless you have that trust there, both a senior executive and a board level. And that has a lot to do with communication, communication style, ease of communication, business knowledge, understanding of all the parties involved in developing those relationships. Yeah, so, so that's certainly the, the piece of being able to communicate in the boardroom and have them understand the implications of a good security practice is a huge part of it. You know, the, the other aspect of it is, you know, how do you build that culture within the rest of the organization, right? So, so down to the, your lower level folks, up, up through management, you know, getting them to jump on board with this idea of having a culture of security. Again, how do you, how do you go about addressing that piece? And what have you done in the past that's been really successful there? So <laughs> I feel like I'm beating it, didn't worry. You have to start with those business relationships at the executive level and truly have an understanding at that level and buy in that that's really where the organization wants to go. Uh, then you have to develop communication and a training program to support it. And it needs to come from more than just you. It needs to come from the other executives of the organization as well. And that's where those business relationships really matter and really come to play for accomplishing that. If it's just the security team standing on a soapbox, lecturing the company on a regular basis about being more security-minded, you're only going to get so far and you're not really going to change the culture. You will be left to basically just make people think a little more about security, which ultimately is the goal of most awareness programs. If you really want to change that culture, you have to have that buy-in at an executive level, and you have to have them participate in communicating that message, as well as other activities associated with change. That makes sense. I think the marketplace is changing quite a bit. Again, you, you see cybersecurity so much more in the news these days with all the threats and things that are happening out there. And we hear about breaches all the time. And um, as you look forward in the next four, five, six years in the kind of this space in particular, what do you see as kind of the future of that the IT security, cybersecurity world? So security is not going to be going away. Um, there's going to be a lot of changes, specifically probably in the encryption fields. Um, I could very easily see identity becoming a much bigger thing, almost like a, a driver's license of individual people. And attacks are going to get more and more sophisticated as well. The problem that we run into now is most of the attacks out there aren't really that sophisticated because they don't have to be. Uh, the stuff that's happening is mostly phishing. It's mostly really easy things like patches and updates and systems that have been forgotten. Attackers are not the most ambitious of people when it comes to doing new things. They're going to do whatever's easiest, whatever is easiest for them to make as much money as possible. And until those things are changed, you won't really see any change. Um, if we don't change the culture, if we don't reduce social engineering and phishing as being this really easy entry point, you won't see much change away from that being the primary attack coming in. But once that happens, that's when you're going to see that massive sophistication change when it comes to the attacker. Yeah. So what have you guys seen with, with everything happening with the pandemic? Have you guys seen a big spike and a rise in the number of threats and, and things like phishing attacks in your organization? Uh, so phishing attacks are very much on the rise. Uh, up, say, five, maybe 600%, uh, at least with what I've been able to notice. A lot of that has to do with what I was referring to earlier. <laughs> Uh, the pandemic hit everyone, including the companies that really do the attacks. Um, most of the hacking organizations out there are businesses in and of themselves, and they got hit by the pandemic as well. So they're trying to do what they can to make as much money as possible while expending as least effort as possible and as least money as possible. To that effect, phishing is the easiest way for them to do that. So there's been a massive increase in phishing attacks combined with the psychological effect that we have something major going on in the world that everyone wants to know about, which increases the clickability of things related to the pandemic. Uh, makes sense. So Rob, last question we take you out on. So we have a lot of folks who watch the show that are, that are coming up in kind of their career in IT and they're thinking about, you know, what areas should they specialize in? So if, if you were going to go back and give, you know, advice to a kind of a young, hungry, uh, IT professionals getting started, why should they go into the, the world of cybersecurity and IT security? In IT in general, you should just go into what you like. Um, if you like it, if you find it interesting, if it's something you wouldn't mind looking at all the time, 
then go into it, or at least find out if you have any good skill in it. If you don't do it that way, if you just go into what you think is going to be the most profitable, or if you go into what you think is going to be the most in demand, you're never truly going to be completely happy in what you're doing. You need to figure out what you like, what you want to do, what interests you within the technology field. And if that falls into the realms of information security, hacking, protecting, blocking and tackling, those type things, then go into information security by all means. Once that decision's been made, then there's lots of advice that can be given on how you escalate or move your career along this path. Yeah, that's great. Well, good advice, Rob. Hey, uh, we appreciate you. I love having you on the show. I feel like we could do like a three-part thing when it comes to security. There's so many different areas and so much stuff we can go into. But uh, I appreciate your wisdom and your, your perspective on things. Thanks so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you very much for having me. You got it. Hey, and thank you guys for joining us as well. If you want to watch other interviews like this one, you can visit automax.com and see our full library of interviews that we've done over the past few years and check out some other stories. And always join us for our future ones here on social media and on LinkedIn as well. Thanks so much and take care.